Hi everybody, welcome back. I am going to share, talk about all the books I read in the month of September. Now this is it. Eight books. That's it. That's all I read. Very slow month. Um, I'm a bit poorly, which is not 100%. And I did start two very big books towards the end of the month, which I finished at the beginning of this month, so that's one. So the first book I read was Me and My Shadows, A Family Story Living with the Legacy of Judy Garland by Lorna Luft. So this is uh, tells the story of Judy's childhood right up until whenever Lorna wrote this. So passes her death and carries on with Lorna's life afterwards. So she gives a background into Judy's uh, life, um, how she got on with her sister and brother as they grew up, the trials and tribulations of living with Judy, what happened when her mother died in London in 1969, and her life afterwards. So doing things like uh, Greece too, and her concert tours, and her children, having her children, which is wonderful. So I, I absolutely loved it, I gave it four stars. I think it's lovely to read a personal account of somebody famous from one of their um, family members, especially if it's written with such love and care as, as it was, as was this one. Absolutely beautiful book. If you're a Judy fan and you haven't read it, it's taken me long enough, mine has been out for years, and I've seen the film based on it, which it only covers the Judy years. I absolutely loved it. I then read Stephen King, which was my Stephen King for the month, which was Joyland. So uh, this is one of these um, crime ones he did, but with his own supernatural twist. So in this one, Devin Jones t is a student and he takes a job at a carnival or amusement park called Joyland because he wants to forget the girl who broke his heart. However, in the years prior, a murder took place on the ghost train in Joyland and it's rumoured that how the ghost of this murdered girl, whose killers was never caught, haunts the ghost train. He meets a dying child as well and becomes friends with them and it's what he learns about life and losing people and finding people with Stephen King's own supernatural twist. Absolutely love this one. It's my favourite of the lot so far. I gave that one five stars and they're all really pretty patterned because Jennifer put the stars in so that was Joyland. I, I would recommend buying the, um, the box set of these because they're really good. I also read another Ripper book. I read Jack the Ripper, A Quest for a Killer by, Killer by M.J. Trow. He identifies a previously unknown suspect who I'm not going to name because what would be the point? I want you to go out and buy the book. Now, M.J. Trow comes from the Isle of Wight and in fact, he was a teacher and he taught one of my friends who lives there, Hannah. So this one, yeah, it's, it is, I, what did I say about this? Um, yes. Interesting ideas of um, the, one of the more likeliest of the, the, the suspects. Um, the person he names, yes, really could have been the killer and there's no reason why not. It would make perfect sense. Whether or not he was, I don't know. Um, very, very interesting. Um, claims that there were seven victims rather than the five that we know of. I believe Tabron is one of those. Um... I would recommend, I mean, this is one of the books I would recommend. I really enjoyed this one. It was a really good read. I have to take the covers off of these if I've got hardback ones because Jennifer doesn't like anything with splats of blood on it. She says it's scary. She's such a gorgeous girl. I then read The House on the Cerulean Sea. You all know this one. This is about Linus. He works for the Ministry of Magical Children or the department in charge of magical youth. Monitors their orphanages. He is then sent by extremely upper management to uh, an orphanage on an island uh, which um, hosts six children that are specifically and un more unusually magically inclined such as uh, there's um, the Antichrist for a start, there's a fairy or a gnome and, and so on. And he goes there and he meets the the headmaster, the, war, the, the, the guy that runs it, Arthur, and they become very, very close. And he starts realising that he, Linus realises that there is more to life than just doing his job, going home and listening to his records. He's got a lot in, in common with all of the children there, even with the Antichrist. The Antichrist likes old records. So whereas they've been secluded on this island, he takes them onto the mainland and takes them to a record shop where the Antichrist, I can't think of his name, well, Lucifer, Lucy, they call him, could go and buy some records. And how the island, the, 
the inland people come to terms with it and, and get to know them. And yeah, I thought it was a lovely story. Now I have heard that there is some backlash against this book to do with indigenous peoples. Personally, I read it purely from the standpoint of it being a fantasy fiction book, um, obviously with um, LBGTQ blah blah overtones because that's what TJ Clean writes and beautifully if I may say so. The, I, that didn't strike me, I just thought that they were, it just showed how people are different and how people do would alienate people because they're different, maybe it's that, but how we have to overcome it so I don't see what the, I don't know, maybe somebody can explain to me because I really didn't get it. Um, I'm old, maybe it's just because I'm old, who knows. My classic of the month, you'll be glad to know, was Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. My dad read this book when he was five years old. My dad, but the, in the wall, there's nothing else to do but read really, let's be honest. <coughs> I, I love the parrots on the cover. So obviously this tells the story of Jim Hawkins, whose mother runs a pub. He meets an old pirate who leaves a chest behind. Uh, they get together with a load of sailors and they go off to Treasure Island with their cook, who is Long John Silver, who obviously is a bad guy. They meet, oh, what's their name? Ben, is it? Something like that. They meet uh, um, one of the previous pirates who was abandoned on the old the island. They find the treasure and they all go home. But it was so much fun. Again, I give it four stars. It's one of those classics It's just beautiful to have. And I will be putting it on the shelf knowing that one to Jennifer will probably read this and enjoy it. And, and boys everywhere have have loved this book for decades and decades and I hope they do and it mentions my hometown of Bristol. Getting near the end now, only three more because like I said it was a very slow month for me. I've already read one, two, three, five, six books this month um, and it's what the eighth <laughs> so I think I'm definitely going to beat it this month but I read this very odd book. This is called Gentlemen Prefer Murder. It's by Hudson Taylor and it's one of the Marilyn Monroe mysteries. So obviously I bought it because it's a fictional take using Marilyn Monroe as a character. And now I don't mind these when it's done like this. Something like Blonde, which tells her whole story completely fictionally, I, I absolutely abhor. I hate them. But this takes Marilyn as a, a character, does away with her past. So this is post 1962, in fact it's 1972. <coughs> so it's set 10 years after her death. And obviously she didn't die that night. Um, she was spirited away by the FBI. Um, and now she's working with an ex-FBI agent solving supernatural mysteries. So they're hired to go to this gentleman's retreat. Her as a disco dancing teacher. And him as a butler or valet or something along those lines. To investigate um, what's going on at this place because this owner's old his son died in a tragic accident and he thinks his son blames him and his ghost is haunting him and things happen so they go off to solve this really really it's actually quite clever really weird mystery um that there's murders happen and at the end when they they've solved the case and they're leaving you find out that there are people trying to to find them to track them down um because they want to get to marilyn um, I, he hasn't written a sequel yet, I don't think. I can't find one. There is supposed to be more. I hope he'll write more. I mean, I gave it three stars because I thought it was a bit odd. But looking back on it now, I think it's a very, very clever premise. And I really hope he does write more. And I will certainly buy them if he does. I read book six in the Enzo... Is it book six? Yeah, of the Enzo McLeod stories. This is about um, a girl who killed a 20 year old girl named Lucy Martin and dumped her into a lake in west of France. During a drought 14 years later her body is recovered or her remains are recovered but no one was ever convicted of her murder. So this is book, um, a, a case six in Rafine's book of Myst French mysteries that have never been solved and Enzo McLeod is reviewing it and he's going to go and, and try and solve it. However he and his family end up in peril because a killer from a previous mystery comes back. Although he solved the mystery and found the actual killer, it was the person that hired the killer that they haven't found that they do find at the end. I actually think they meant to end. He meant to end the series here because there's one more case after this. But at the end of this book, he says he, he didn't really win the bet because he doesn't want to disclose who the killer is for reasons you need to write, read the book for. Um, but there is one more, and it wasn't in the box set, so I'm gonna have to buy it 
as it is so I can read it, just so I can find out what happened in the seventh case, which is Rafine's wife's murder. But yes, he does solve the murder. It's a very sad story. Um, but as always, classic Peter May. Absolutely love it. A quick sip and then we'll move on to the last book I read. I'm so thirsty. Which was Richard Osman, The Bullet That Missed. Book three in the Thursday Murder Club series. This one sees our friends at the um, retirement home investigating a decade old murder of a news reader who was on something big to do with I want to say money, not money laundering, just to, anyway, on something big. Um, and her car goes over a cliff, but her body is never recovered. So they decide to reopen it and investigate it. However, as a subplot, we have a Eastern European money launderer who wants to launder through cryptocurrency, who is not happy because the old school money launderers are preventing it from happening to an extent. He's doing it but not as much as he wants. So he abducts Elizabeth and her husband who has dementia and takes them away and says you've got to go and kill this Russian, ex-Russian KGB guy because she's ex-MI5 and something like that. And, but it, it is somebody who she had a little fling with in the past before she met her husband. Um, so hence the title of the bullet missed, that missed because they pretend to kill him. Obviously this Eastern European finds out that this guy is not dead but in the end they all come together and work together to solve the mystery of this murdered newsreader and they all become friends and help each other out it's really good I absolutely love these books I think Richard Osmond is a fantastic writer and you look at him and you read what he's written and there he is there's Richard there and everybody in the UK knows him because he is on a TV series called Pointless and he's got his own TV quiz on Dave called House Games or whatever channel it's on, on Dave when I watch it. And um, you wouldn't think it, but he's so intelligent and these plots are so good. In the book, there is a hint that there will be a book four. So I'm very excited because I absolutely adore these books. So I gave that five stars as well. Those are the eight books that I read. I think that's the eight, yeah. In September. October, I, uh, like I said, I've already read a few. I've got a stack by my bed to read. And I'm looking forward to, to seeing what happens next. And I'm, you know, I'm trying not to buy as many books, so I have still got a ton on my book, on top of my bookcases, where my TBR is kept. And I need to clear some space because I need to move something else up there because I run out of colouring book space. I'm a bit of a disaster. But that's it. Anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you read any of these? Um, are you going to read any of these based on what I've said? I don't want to give too much of the plots away, but anyway. I will see you in the next video, guys. Love you. Bye.